Hello and good day. Today I'm going to show you how to make an ephemera file folder system. Now this is for your desk and it's one that you can move around. So you can put it in the cupboard or you can put it on your shelves and you can leave it in front of your work mat here like I've done. I'll be leaving it on my work mat most of the time. Now it's got handles on the side here. I'll show you this. I'll show you how really cool this is. Look at the handle. So when I put my fingers, so you can see that I've got a bit of room here, for my fingers. So when I put my fingers in the side of this tray, it's really easy transportable. I haven't made the handles come out here because they will take up room. It's made so that it can be stacked and it's also made that it can be just tucked away neatly. So the cutout handles suit this particular tray really well. Now here's an empty tray and I've also got the pattern available. This is available for all of my subbies, my YouTube subbies. It's time for me to give you all something. Now all it is, it's not really the pattern. All it is, is the measurements of this particular box. So if you hop on over to my website, you'll be able to get the measurements and make this box yourself. This is my old one. I've got a, quite a few of these little boxes and you can see that the handles there are cut out. So we've got the base, the sides, it gives you all the thickness and everything you need to be able to make this little box. Now the way I've designed this is that these dividers go inside the tray and I've used my cereal box, just a whatever size cereal box fits inside here. So you don't want anything wider than this. If you want to use a bigger cereal box, you just need to make your tray longer this way. So I've cut my cereal box in half that way. You can see there, and then I've covered it. So that's given me two dividers to use in my craft tray. Now the next thing is I've made some little file folders out of laminate. This is laminate and transfer paper. And they're perfect for just putting all of your little bits and pieces straight into these dividers. So you've got a six by six stack and everybody is always looking for somewhere to put their offcuts of their six by six once they've cut them out. You can make these file folders as long as you want. So once you've cut out your pieces, you just pop them in here and you can see through it because you've used the tracing paper. You don't need to use anything too heavy. You can use vellum, but you only want to use something light and you don't want to spend a lot of money on it. So just use tracing paper and pop that in there. You'll always know where they are. They're easy to find. You can make your folder longer to protect the top of the paper as well. This one here I've cut totally in half. So say so that's my sheet that I've made. It's an A4 size. We use A4 in Australia. And I've cut this one totally in half. So that would be the other half. And I've got two file folders out of one sheet. This one here I've cut the half a bit longer so I've cut it all the way down to there so I've ended up with a longer pocket and a shorter pocket and that's totally fine you can cut your pockets out whatever size you need to so this one here is the piece I cut off so I needed it longer to protect the top of my paper so I'm, I'm using my faux stamps to store in this one so I can see what they are, I can see the colours and that gets cut off there and then I've got a nice short pocket for the stamps that I made, my giant stamps. So I needed somewhere to put them. So they store away in my filing system and I can see everything right in front of me straight away. I even made a little short, short one to put tiny little tickets in. 
you're going to love this system. It really is very useful. So let me show you how to make these, the folders themselves. You need some laminate sheets. This here are the hot laminating pouches. This is 250 microns. These are not that heavy. They're much lighter than that. I don't know what they are because they were in among my mum's things. They're just your average lightweight. You don't need the real heavy ones to do this project. Then I've got some tracing paper. This was also in mum's stash, so I can't tell you what weight this is. Again, it's quite light. Do not forget to do this. You need two pieces of tracing paper or two pieces of see-through paper, whatever you use to make your pocket. What you need to take into account is that you need a border around the edge of your tracing paper. See here you need a seal. If I was to use this paper that goes all the way to the edge, this won't work because there'll be no seal around the edge. This one here has got a seal. You can see that there on either side, the laminate has a border. So you can see the seal. You need that. So we're going to trim back our tracing paper just enough for me to have a border all around the whole four sides. And that will create a seal when the laminate goes through the machine. Now we put our two sheets together, line them up so that they're straight. Open up your laminate pouch. And square that up, leaving a border all the way around. I'm going to use my mat and my grid lines to help me do that. Just as long as you've got a border that side and that side and we know that it's quite wide on either end. Now I'm using a mink machine today to heat set this. You can use any laminate machine you've got. Okay, now we've sealed our tracing paper between the sheets of the laminate. Because there's two pieces of tracing paper in here, that is what forms our pocket. So we'll end up with a piece of tracing paper on this side and a piece on this side. So when I cut it in half, that breaks the seal. So we find our halfway mark. Now be careful when you cut this because it's slippery. I'm holding my ruler down quite firm. And I'm going to do a light pass first and then go a heavier cut and cut it all the way through. And that's so that my, my laminate doesn't move around. Now when I pick this up, it's going to break that seal and I end up with my pocket. Now all that's left to do is put a thumb hole in it. I like to put the thumb hole in the front like this. You can hand cut it or you can use your cutter, but you need a really good quality one for this because the laminate is a bit harder to cut. So I'm going to find my halfway mark again on here. Transfer that to there. You've got to be a bit Houdini to do this. You've got to hold it there. You could use some washi tape on it if it sort of gets away from you a bit. Let's see how I go. Beautiful. So it does pay. This is not paper. It's just a little bit heavier than paper. Not much. But that cut a fairly good hole. There's your pockets. Now I'll just put this away and I'll get out my tab punch and I'll show you how I made my tabs. Now to make a tab I've made them so they're removable, so you can change them around. All it is, two sides, and they just slip over the top of the laminate like that. You need the tabs unless you've got something poking out from the top so you know what's in each pouch, other than what you can see through. 
I've got a tab punch, but if you haven't, just use any tab you've got that's your favourite. So I'm just going to cut out two. I'm recycling here. These tab punches are great. If you haven't got one, they're fantastic. They make very quick work. Now I'm using the Art Glitter Glue. It's a industrial strength glue. It dries very quickly. So I'm just gluing the top bit. I'm not gluing down the bottom and I'm not gluing near the edge. I don't want the glue to come out at the top or further down here at the bottom because I want to be able to slide that onto my folder. So I'm popping that there. There's your tab made. I will distress ink that. I've used a Dymo label on this one, but you can use whatever you got. You can cut out some letters. You could use a dark brown one like this and just use the gel pen and hand write on it. We use another Dymo label. They're so fun to use. Bring that out. So if ever you see one of these Dymo labels, a vintage looking thing, if ever you see one of these on eBay or in Australia on Gumtree, grab it. They are so cool to use. You just peel the sticker off the back. Now I add a little bit extra glue because I don't want these labels to come off at all. Using the art glitter glue again and I'll just place that on there. They look really good. Now where's my tickets? You can put it on the back or on the front doesn't matter which which way you use that. How cool are they? If you don't want to make yourself a wooden tray like I have, I've I like I said I use these wooden trays a lot. They are excellent to have in your craft room. If you don't want to use the wooden trays, try this one. Just one of those boxes that you can buy from any stationery shop and cut your cereal box a different way. Cut it in half this way rather than the long way I done on this one. To prepare our cereal box to cut in half, we're going to turn this box into our file folder holder. Just need to pick a cereal box that's going to fit in our base and I'm going to seal these edges. So I'm going to close the box back up. You would be using uh, Fabri-Tac. We use the uh, equivalent which is Helmer fabric glue. And glue that closed. Now I'm going to cut this in half long ways. So I want, I want the cut line to go down the centre. So I'm going to find my centre mark here and I'll just mark that there. Now I'm going to measure that is nine centimetres or around about three and a half inches. And I'm just going to mark that all the way across the box. Then I shall pencil line that marker. Do that all the way around. Nice and little there. So where that line comes here, I know I'm going to carry it over here. I'm going to do the same on this one where that line comes here. I'm going to carry it over and mark it here. 
So now I'm just going to start cutting. Now it's hollow, so when you push on this box, it's going to want to cave in a little bit. So you do have to be a little bit careful and just do a couple of passes. Do a shallow pass first and then another one second. And then come back and just very slowly just cut into that line and your knife should follow that line if you take it nice and slow. Just pull your arm back from the elbow, don't move your wrist. Just continue all the way around and cut that box open. So now we've got our four little pockets made for our tray. Now we can cover these and our filing system is almost finished. I'll just clear this up and get the paper ready to cover these little pockets. Now I'm going to show you how to cover the cereal boxes just with cardstock. Now I've just used a, it's, it's got a decent weight to it. And I've cut it, the strips, all the way around so it's got a nice, neat finish and it's made for a much sturdier box. So I'm going to cover just one. I've got a pair because I've cut my box in half already, but we're just going to cover this one. Now this is good if you've got a little bit of a crease or a bow in your box. It's a good way to strengthen it. First off, you just need to get your cardstock. So once you've picked out what you're going to use, just using a scrapbooking cardstock. I know that my half of my box is 90 millimeters or nine centimeters wide this way. So I've now gone ahead and I've measured nine centimeters in three strips, two sheets of this 12 by 12 covered three boxes. So in this pattern I've got three and my fourth box I had to do in a contrasting pattern but that's still fine. It still looks really good with it. After all I'm only housing my ephemera. So I'll start off by, that's I've marked it on the back because it's much easier to see. So I'm just going to cut down my strips. I only need two strips per little pocket box. I'm going to score my first corner here. So I need to go around the corner here. So I'm going to put that on here and I'm just going to randomly pick a spot around about halfway. So I know that that's going to be about halfway from there to there. Your box size will be different so I can't give you a measurement. So I'm just going to guesstimate. So I'm going to score that there and I'm going to fold it. The usual crease is necessary. So that now goes around the corner there like that. I'll mark so that is going to sit flush here and here. So I'm holding here and I'm holding here. I'm going to turn it around and I'm not letting go and I'm just going to mark where that finishes there. So I'm going to score that there and I'm going to fold it and crease that down. I'm not cutting anything off just yet. Now it always pays to turn your work back around the way you measured it in the first place. Right, I started off this one first and then there. So that fits perfectly. All right, now I'm going to glue that onto there and then I'll move on to covering the other side. So I'm just using the Helmer fabric glue again because it's nice and strong. 
I don't need to take it all the way to the edge because it'll squish itself down and move around inside. But just check if you use a cardboard that's really shiny, you might need to sand it first. Okay, bit of glue on the tabs to come around the side. This glue grabs quite quickly as well. I'm going to hold it on the table and make sure it's all nice and flush. I can use my bone folder to go inside. If any of these bits here come away on the inside, just get some extra glue and glue them down. I'm just going to use the art glitter glue to do that because it's easier to get inside here. Now's your opportunity to be fixing that up. All right, now we'll do the other side. Same again. This time I'm going to put that on here to figure out where I'm going to put my fold line here. So I'm going to butt that up there like that, hold it, I'm going to hold it with a, a clip, then I'm going to mark here so I know now I can come and put a score line there. Fold that. So again, gluing this side down. So I'll glue this down and I'll be back in a minute. Now to put the washi over the side, I'm going to use the same washi as I did on this one so that it, it looks like a set. So to do that, I'm pretty much going to measure half. So I work out how far down I want my washi to come so that it's at least in line. So I'm just going to mark here where I want it to fall. And I'll start off my first piece. I am going to use a little bit extra of the art glitter glue on here because I don't want the washi to come off over time. And what will happen is the top of this box will take a beating over time. This here is going to be used a lot because I'm going to put things in and out of here a lot. I'm going to use this heaps. So pull out my washi half and half. I'm going to put the bottom of the washi on those two marker lines. I'm coming over the edge on both ends. Not by much because I don't want to waste my precious washi. And I'll do that all the way around and I'll then know that it's going to be even like that all the way around and even on the inside and look nice and neat. I'm going to cut off that even with the edge of the box and the same with that one and because it's washy it just folds over really easy. Same again put a bit more glue back on the inside just a thin bead just at the top here and if you really want to go further, just a thin bead on the fold line. Very thin bead. You don't need much at all. But remember that the uh, glitter glue is industrial strength. I hold it up and then I grab the middle and I fold it from the middle. And then I use my fingers to pinch all the way out to the end. Pinch all the way back to that end. Then from the inside... I go like that when it's on the table. Okay, so there's my first piece done. Now, what I'll do now is I'll follow the bottom of that washi tape all the way around until it comes back to here. So I'll put a piece on this end. 
So I'll do that all the way around and I shall be back. Here we go. There's our nice, neat set. This definitely makes a stronger box. We're done, ladies and gentlemen. We've made ourselves an ephemera filing system. I'm Donna from Junk Journal Ideas. Thanks for watching and bye for now.